The United Nations was established after World War II with a promise to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. Long live the United Nations. Special political missions are one of the instruments the organization has at its disposal to advance this promise. SPMs, as they are called, are civilian missions deployed by the General Assembly or the Security Council under Chapter 6 of the UN Charter. They can also be established by the Secretary General as part of his good offices. It all started 75 years ago on the 14th of May 1948 when the General Assembly decided to deploy a UN mediator in Palestine. One week later, Volker Bernadotte was appointed to this role. This was the start of what would later be known as special political missions. Since then, numerous such missions have been deployed to different parts of the world with a range of different mandates. In the 1950s and 1960s, Special political missions supported the process of decolonization and the birth of independent states in Africa, Asia and the Middle East. And after the end of the Cold War, SPMs worked with countries in Latin America to help negotiate an end to civil wars and manage political transitions. In South Africa, the special political mission observed the landmark election that ushered in the transition from apartheid to a non-racial democratic society. In Eritrea, the mission supervised and observed the independence referendum. The global peace and security environment today is volatile. New crises are erupting as our established capacities to resolve conflict become dangerously overstretched or are hobbled by geopolitical tensions. In the face of these challenges, including the long-term effects of the pandemic, and the climate crisis, a multilateral system based on cooperation for sustainable peace and development and respect for international law remains indispensable. Over the past decades, the breadth of the work carried out by SPMs has expanded as member states continue to turn to these missions to address challenges to international peace and security. New trends have made the work of special political missions harder, but also more critical. Over 40 SPMs are deployed today, including in some of the world's most challenging peace and security environments. They vary in size and number of tasks. They carry out a spectrum of critical mandates, from preventive diplomacy and peacemaking to supporting the implementation of peace agreements and sustaining peace. They assist member states in promoting human rights and in strengthening the full, equal, and meaningful participation of women in political and peace processes. They also support the inclusion of other actors in dialogue, notably youth, as well as marginalized constituencies. In today's environment, regional partnerships are essential in peace and security. In West Africa and the Sahel, Central Africa, the Great Lakes region, the Horn of Africa and Central Asia, SPMs work with regional and sub-regional organizations and other partners to diffuse tensions, address emerging crises, and tackle cross-border threats to peace and security. SPMs must change and have had to change as conflicts have evolved. This adaptability has enabled missions to make an important contribution as part of the wide-ranging offer of peace and security mechanisms that the United Nations can provide to member states and to the citizens of the world. Special political missions embody our collective aspiration to engage in diplomacy for peace and to work towards a more peaceful, just, equitable and safer world. Seventy-five years on, special political missions are more important than ever. I pay tribute to all who have served in them and urge member states to continue to support them. Together, we can and must forge peace.